WNST. AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. We are uh, positively into uh, Baltimore versus Washington week. I, you know, I really had to think, who do I want on the air this week to properly set the perspective for the young ones out there uh, that this used to have some significance beyond we're all together in the DMV, and um, and I'm a Capitals fan from old line back. I don't know why. I'm not anymore, but I was for a long, long time. We did this great segment over Costas last week with Leonard Raskin, as well as the fellow that wrote the Capital Center retrospective book. So I guess the Baltimore-Washington thing meets somewhere there I have a handful of people that used to root for John Riggins and Joe Theismann and the 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 Chief Wahoo and and Joe Gibbs and all of that. Uh, but for the most part, most of the people I know are offended that Joe Flacco is wearing a Colts jersey at this point. Let alone that the Commanders come in under different ownership with this all-world quarterback. So I reached all the way to the back to a guy I've probably done more radio with than anybody this side of Luke Jones. That is Colossus joins us now from. Uh, dealerships and parts on the west side of the city now doing several things uh, with Coons Baltimore Ford and uh, make it so busy he can't only come on for once a month now and can't even do the Thursday show anymore because he's too busy but not too busy to talk about Miracle Win, Oriole Elimination, Baltimore Washington. Dennis, how are you? I miss you. I miss you too, Nestor. A lot of things to unpack. I went fishing Sunday. Of course, I taped the game and stayed off of my cell phone so i was able to How do watch you do that and why it's... do you do that well because i want to enjoy myself it was a beautiful day 74 degrees uh, the breeze the sunlight the water the fish Are you a control freak you need to be in control of no, your time not at all to say it's my time it's my day and i'm gonna do what i want to do and that football game can wait for me you're really unique in that, dude. Like, I don't know any. <laughs> my mother used to screw things up for me when she was alive. She'd call me and give me the score. When I'd tell her 10 times not to do it, she'd still do it. Yeah, a lot of uh, our kids, uh, they, they paid attention. They didn't tell us. They didn't uh, play the role, role of a spoiler. So when we got home, we had a nice dinner. We were able to watch the game and fast forward to their commercials. So we had a really good time and uh, had no idea what the outcome would be. And it was just a fantastic game. And. I, I still, uh, my, my throat's still a little bit sore because I was screaming so loud at the TV set. So it was, from a, a fan standpoint, it was a phenomenal, phenomenal game that uh, the Ravens coaching staff tried to give away, but the players came through for them. Let's talk about the coaching because uh, uh, I don't have, you know, I, I've talked, we did segments like Luke and I, this is what happens then is I, I, I write a letter to dear David Rubenstein and people think that that's all I do. No, no, no. We talk pitching, strategy, roster, bullpen, hitting, offense, off season. Empty seats, they won't talk about that in Masson. Um, like, revenue, they won't talk about that in Masson. Y- you know, like, how they're going to build it. And, but I talked about the offense, which was, came to life. I talked about the defense, which is questionable. We talked about the special teams, which has been a mixed bag. And what happens when Cincinnati can't spin a ball. And when we had a thing here called the Wolf Pack that operated for 15 years, that is going to put Justin Tucker in the Hall of Fame. Justin Tucker's in the Hall of Fame because Sam Cook spun the ball like in Denver, in, you know, in Detroit a couple of years ago. You know, like whatever is a part of all of that that creates this. The coaching gives teams a chance to win. And at the other level, you run operations and you know when things go wrong at the top. The Harbaugh thing, I I can talk about how screwed up they are in the front office. And it's clear. They're allowing Luke to cover practice Wednesday and I can't. There's something very wrong going on there when I've been treated the way I've been treated on a global sense. Then there's the coaching part. And we watch this and we witness this and we see – Things that are happening in the course of the game, like the red flag, and he's looking up at the screen. 15 years into this is what we're doing. This is your strategy. This is your, this is your system. And I don't know. I, it feels to me like they're good at football, and they're good at ball coach, and they're good at Bible passages and slogans, and they're good at all of that. But then when it comes time to manage timeout, they, they, he's not good at that. Well, the end of the, uh, the towards the end of the first half, that was a real head scratcher. Taking the time out there, third and ten, you're going to give the Bengals the ball back, right? So they stopped the clock, and not paying attention that at that point and, and throughout the game, really, the uh, they were playing pitch and catch. Joe Burrow was with uh, Jamar Chase and T Higgins, 
And not only did they give up a field goal, they gave up a, a, a freaking touchdown uh, to close, the, to actually take the lead. And then the, the penalty on Matabike, which took the, uh, uh, the, the conversion there, the two-point conversion. I mean, this team should have been leading at the half 14-7. The fact that we're down 17 to 14 was maddening. And we just thought this was going to be a long, long day for the Ravens with the, with the uh, them coming out on the short end of the stick. Fortunately, they, they, they pulled it back together. Lamar did Lamar things. I'd remiss if I didn't comment on the play where he dropped the ball, got up and scrambled and threw a touchdown to Isaiah Likely. Uh, That's it was a top a, fiver in his list. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was, and I'm thinking like he's had a lot of plays, but yeah. it's hard for him to have a top fiver. I mean, the number one for me will always be in Cincinnati. I told Luke when he broke the ankles and you oh know my did God, the spin, that was crazy. and I'm in the press box, and everybody in the press box, like it was like they saw something in a theater. It was like, and then they laughed, and I mean, there was just this uproarious sound in the Cincinnati press box. That's the same press box where the press box announcer called them the bungles. <laughs> the bungles, exactly. I mean, I, I've experienced things in Cincinnati, but that was very special. It really was. Uh, it really was, Nestor. They snatched the victory from the jaws of defeat. It was classic. You thought the game was over with uh, when they lined up for the game-winning field goal in overtime. Uh, as you mentioned, they didn't spin the ball well. They didn't get the snap down. It was a, a poor snap by the uh, long snapper. And, uh, of course, Justin Tucker, he gets a chance to redeem himself. 56-yarder and a chip shot for the win, for the walk-off win there. Uh, amazing game. Uh, and I'm running out of superlatives to describe the players. Uh, hopefully, uh, Marlon Humphrey will not be out too long. They said he was in the boot after the game. Uh, he came up really big with interception. They needed a turnover. That was the only way they were stopping that uh, Bengals offense. That is Colazzo, says our gas, the familiar tones. What do you, give me a little, sell me a car. Do something for me. Give, sell me some service. Come on now. Uh, well, we, we have a ton of inventory, man. I tell you what, the the worm has turned. Uh, we, a couple of years ago, we had no vehicles to sell. Now we have a surplus. We have 500 new vehicles at Baltimore Ford, 175 used, and 250 at the Kia stores with another 100 used. So we have a lot of inventory, and right now it's a buyer's market. If anybody needs a car, now's a great time to come out and get one. You're selling Kias too. Good value there. Great value, great car. Uh, underpriced uh, with the, with the great value. It's a wonderful automobile, but uh, great value for the dollar. So we have we have the products to sell for sure. All right. Well, I want to go back to coaching here and not just beating up Harbaugh. I mean, they had the ball after the Lamar fumble at home with a crowd that's ready to just go nuts with a defense that couldn't stop a nosebleed. To uh, to to quote my my one time partner, buddy Ryan. And they sat on the ball and attempted a field goal that's way longer than you want to attempt in that circumstance. And I think if Zach Orr would have drawn up what I want them to do, run the ball into the gut on first, half-ass it on second and give up on third, and then come out here and try a 56-yard field goal like it's a yeah. chip shot, and then the operation didn't work, and they lost the football game to fall to the seller after blowing a 10-point lead twice at home with Joe Burrow. And in an operation that they they were never stopped by the Ravens defense, I, I and they you know they had two major mistakes with Lamar and they didn't capitalize on it. Burrow threw that terrible pick that you mentioned to Lamar uh, to uh, Marlon Humphrey, and we saw two completely different styles with how to run an offense. We're going to see the Lamar copycat this week, the new way of doing it uh, with Jaden Daniels, but. I'm always a proponent of the Joe Burrow style of offense, which is you can't touch him, drop back the pass, timing plays, great receivers, mismatches, reading the line of scrimmage, getting into the best play. Um, and the Ravens couldn't stop it. And it's astonishing. We beat Harbaugh up you want or the defense, uh, how, however you feel about Marcus Williams or play call, whatever it would be, timeouts. Boy, the Bengals, yeah. P.U., yeah, they went to bed, and, and right now the Ravens found themselves at the top of the AFC Central, tied with the Steelers, who lost to the Cowboys, both teams 3-2. and two. Ravens are surprisingly a six-and-a-half-point favorite heading to the game against the Commanders. I, I would think the spread would be much closer than that. Jaden Daniels, great quarterback. I watch his career at LSU. He To me, he's a taller, lankier Lamar Jackson. Uh, I worry about him running because of, of his length. But uh, he definitely has the the DC fan base charged up. I have a lot of colleagues in that that in the DMV area. But boy, they they love their commanders right now because of Jaden Daniels. 
you know, maybe this is a good time to talk to you about this because I love having you on to talk business and money and um, and how all this works. You went to the Oriole game last Tuesday. You offered that to me off the air, uh, the empty seats. Mm. And people get, you know, it was amazing. I went out, Leonard Raskin had his birthday party. We're going to be celebrating over. By the way, we're going to be in Essex. Come over and have some pizza and some crab cakes with us on Friday. We're going to be at Pizza John's in your homeland. Uh, um, I, Mr. Was there about, I was there about two weeks ago. All right, well, come on by, and yeah. I'm going to be there on Friday afternoon. My birthday, Luke's birthday, Leonard's birthday, Jim nice. Palmer's birthday, you know, Stacy Keebler's birthday. So, you know, all the uh, all the legends. So uh, what, next time, what, what time will you be there? All afternoon. I'll be there from noon until you make me leave. Stop feeding me pizza. Um, so we'll be over there on Friday uh, with our friends at the Maryland Lottery. we we'll have Scratch All. So all of our sponsors, we're doing the Oyster Tour with Liberty Pure Solutions and Curio Wellness. It's our 26th anniversary. I did 26 oysters, uh, as well as Jiffy Lube, Multicare, uh, powering up the Crab Cake Tour. But they got the crinkle cut fries over there with the gravy. I mean, come on. Uh, So Luke and I last week touched on the empty seats. And it's amazing in the aftermath that the Oriole fans are way meaner even than the Ravens fans when people want to be mean about just stupid stuff, right? And I see the empty seats and people think I'm being a jerk. They need to build their brand. And the optics of 10,000 empty seats when you're trying to sell season tickets in the offseason, when you're trying to get Mr. Coons or whomever owns whatever company to buy whatever thing to buy in again. And this is where I wrote this very heartfelt, very honest. I'm tired of being treated like garbage. I'm 56 years old this week. I don't have to come back. I don't have to buy cable television. I don't have to come down and be a part of it. Tickets were 10 bucks on Tuesday and Wednesday. And my wife even said to me, why aren't you going? And I'll let you in, Dennis. Wednesday, my wife had a doctor's appointment, a dentist appointment at 430 game time, literally five blocks in the stadium because we live down there in Federal Hill. Mr. Dr. Lebo, I had Mark Viviano on, still our dentist. My wife had a longstanding dentist appointment. I said, Man, there's going to be a lot of people down there at 4.30 on game day. You might not be able to park. So she left the house at 3, whatever, 35 for this appointment. And Alan McCallum hit me five minutes later and said, do you want to go to the game? And I said, Alan, if you hit me 20 minutes ago, I had a free ride. I would have gone with Alan. I would have gone with you. I would have gone with anybody who loves me that I love. The weather was fine. I just And I had worked a little bit. And I got comfy watching the strike zone. I see the game better on TV. I see the strike zone. Now, if I had a press credential, I could see that in the press box and see the game and talk to them afterward. But like to me, I'm not prissy about baseball. But I don't need to go sit in the left field and pay 10 bucks. And, a, and a, like I don't. Where the Wi-Fi may or may not work, I don't know. I've been in the stadium enough to, to but like, I opted to stay home. But then Alan hit me, and I had some regret about like, right? And they were in these games, one run games, one hit games, like all of that. But there's something about the optics of the emptiness that breaks my heart. Peter's dead. His kids are in the dugout counting their money, hitting the walk-off grand slam, as I wrote to dear David Rubenstein. Now it's like. Who's going to lift this thing? I'm watching the Padres with with Mr. Seidler. Uh, they have his P- PS on their jerseys, Manny Machado. Packing that ballpark. My cousin's paying 150 bucks a throw to go to the games in San Diego. Wearing all her ish. Mm. Philadelphia's selling. The, the Mets this week, they're all engaged. Their fans are engaged. Our fans weren't even engaged enough to come out for 10 bucks and fill up this, the ballpark when the whole message was be the noise. And it's game time. The boogeyman's going to shoot me in the city. Uh, it's too far. It's It was 10 bucks. Mm. And I, I said to Luke, it's like Ollie's bargain giveaway. At a buck and a quarter, I wasn't going. When the tickets were 12 bucks, I might have given Mr. Rubenstein 12 bucks if his guy didn't treat me like garbage and blow me off for five months as though I'm, I'm unimportant, as though I'm not a human, as though I'm not a fan. Yeah. And as I said, every one of those seats is somebody that stayed away. And I don't. I'm just investigating it. I know why I stayed away, but I, it's it's heartbreaking to me. And I don't know. This is the bottom when they can't sell out playoff games. I mean, right, I mean, seriously, seriously, they couldn't sell out playoff games for ten bucks. That that that's not good. That's not good. It's not a good look. No, it's not. I wasn't going to go Nestor because where where I wanted to say that, and I'm getting a little picky at my advancing age here. Uh, there were three hundred dollars a seat, so I wasn't paying that. But somebody called me the morning of and said, "Hey." I've got these great tickets. I can't go. Would you like four? 
So I took them, and that's why I was there. But like you, I was surprised at the at the absence uh, at the empty seats at the stadium. I mean, the entire uh, left field, uh, the upper deck was just it was empty. And and for a playoff game, you've got to be kidding me. The place was loud, but it would have been louder, obviously, with another ten thousand fans there. So it was amazing to me as a casual Orioles fan that uh, this thing was a complete and total sellout. Did it kind of blow you away, or did you expect it, it when you got there? No, I, it blew I, me I, away. I, I, I mean, there was no chance on Sunday night. Joe Enoch hit me. He's like, "They're going to be ten thousand empty seats because we looked at the inventory and they faked the inventory and they pulled." Like I'd see it. I saw the prices drop like a rock. I saw the desperation. I saw the ads all over my social media to try to buy a ticket. Hey, the Ravens are running buy a ticket ads in the middle of October. I mean, t- we're in a different economic space. You yep. sell cars. I sell media. I sell everything. I sell crab cakes. I sell crab soup. I sell insurance. I sell everything here. I talk to people in the economy. I talk to the Biden haters. I talk to the Trump lovers. I talk to, I see everything that's going on. $10 baseball tickets. You know what? Um, Mm. What's, what's that, that, um, that book that the women were reading years ago. She's just not into you. He's just not into you. Whatever, you know, whatever it is. Like, I mean, like, Look, I no. am I am broken. I, I am online every day looking at old baseball pictures, buying stuff. I bought something online the other day that uh, you'll appreciate. Even my wife saw this. She, she's like, that's kind of beautiful. Can I show it to you? Just, uh, sure. just show you what it is. I bought this for a couple bucks on the internet. Nice. So I've been collecting old things and Aparicio widgets now that he's the the planet's oldest living hall of famer and by the way i looked this up and i was really wrong because all this chris ullman stuff i've been writing about being venezuelan i have to you need to prove that you're greek um but he's the only hall of famer who's venezuelan and i didn't really oh, i thought okay. odonias i thought these other guys were in already uh, Cabrera, they're not uh galaraga not, so i was like okay so i'll, I'll go with that i love baseball but in order for baseball to be whole again here they need to sell tickets. They need to get money. They need to get your car dealership and your other car dealership and me and everybody I know. They need to have Costas doing buses. They need they need the community to engage with the team. And I don't know how that's going to happen, Dennis, but I've seen Katie Griggs' first act. She can bring her Dartmouth thing here and whatever and ban me. Or she can get together nicely with me and say, how can we help? I had three former Oriole employees over the weekend. Literally. Huge, cool people write to me and they're like, dude, if he reads that letter, he should hire you. Not ban you. He should hire you Mm -hmm. to help him sell tickets. Because that's just not – it's unacceptable to me that the upper deck was empty. It should be unacceptable to them. It really should be. It's a bad look, Nestor. It's a bad look for the organization. I mean, come on now. You got it. They won 191 so games. So, how do you in fix it? I'm asking you, how do you fix it? 191 games in two years, and you can't pack the stadium for a playoff game? You got to be kidding me. So, there's definitely something wrong. Like you said, community engagement, getting the players out, uh, having meet and greets with the fans. Again, uh, there's got to be uh, the, the marketing department needs to step it up for sure. Well, in my letter, I'm like, don't blame the weather, don't blame the start time. Don't blame the price point. I mean, the price point was price for me. Yeah. And I don't want to give them money based on how they treated me. But I, I think I would have had a $15 experience with Alan McCallum on Wednesday. Even when they didn't hit the ball, I would have preferred to have been with him because I love him. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what baseball is. I, if you would have called me Tuesday and said, I got four behind the dugout. Do you want one? My wife was flying in that afternoon. It was weird. I would have gone. Because I was, I had to pick my wife up at the airport at seven o'clock. So I was already halfway in. I, if I anybody would offer me a ticket, I would have gone on Tuesday and Wednesday. Not to say I don't have listeners, friends, whatever. Nobody else wanted to go either. Uh, yeah. You know, and and it's, uh, yeah. Look, if, if my tickets weren't free, I wouldn't have gone. I mean, again, it's as simple as that. It, it, call wow. me whatever, call me fair weather, but and it's it, not it like is. you can't afford the twelve bucks. You no, know, I can afford the twelve bucks, barely, right. but I can afford it. Well, I think you just said a lot without saying a lot at all. Where are you on the Baltimore Washington thing? Does it break your heart that it's not like a thing the way it used to be? It was a lot more fun when Sarah Goose was out on the nasty van drinking beer, like the last scene in The Shining with me and T Bone out in the rain when we beat them down at the IKEA Stadium. But we've come a long way. I mean, the fact that we ever hated them and felt the way we felt is because we felt like we were the yeah. little brother in that relationship, and we're we've been the daddy over 25 years, big time. Well, I will let you know Sunday because I'm not going fishing Sunday. I'm going to go, uh, God willing, to the game. 
in that real let, time? In real time, so I will let you know how, how many. Are you, how's your heart going to handle that <laughs> at, at, down there? We'll, we'll find out. So we'll, we'll see how many Washington fans are there uh, to counter the Ravens fans. We'll see how many Ravens fans sell their tickets for this game this weekend. That's that's really one of the the, the subplots I'm trying to uh, take a look at, Nestor. Is it going to be a home game for the, for the Commanders? Is it going to be 50, 50, 60, 40, 70, 30? You oh, tell me. Yeah, the Commanders are a dead brand. I, I, don't think they're, I don't think they're activated. Mm, I think they are. I think they'll be surprised. They're they're jacked up. I mean, they're averaging what thirty eight points a game. This kid's got them about uh, playing some good ball. Now you're worrying me that there's going to be a Washington takeover. And a, this is what happens when Chad Steele chases me out of the seats. I well, mean, yeah, like I, I'm not. That's just a that's just a fact. Me and my wife's asses would have been down there at a buck fifty a throw in our seats, wearing our pom pom, wearing our purple underwear, being mistreated by Marlon Humphrey in a boot after the game. Didn't matter. We went to the games. We supported the team financially, spiritually, in every way, and I was thrown out. So like my seats are open, and that's kind of like how this happens. You, you know what I mean? The seats are open. They're available. That's insane to me that that we're not more activated. And I'll say this out loud. I, I mean, the Ravens can win the Super Bowl, man. Like, they have enough – they got to get the defense together. But staying healthy as a healthy unit, and that's always knock on wood. This version of Ronnie Stanley, this version of Lamar, this version of the offense with Derrick Henry. You and I haven't even talked since Derrick Henry's been here. Do you have any years I pined away for Derrick Henry to be here? Uh, you, you and everybody else in Baltimore, what a great fit he is. And he was fresh. He had fresh legs in the overtime period. They couldn't stop him. It was just wonderful to watch. Well, we're winning in all sorts of ways. You still winning, Dennis? I'm sorry? You still winning? Like, we're all winning, right? Uh, look, above ground is a win for me. <laughs> tell everybody day. where to find you. Sell them some cars. Come on, hey, man. You've been at this cars, too long. 410-218-0337 is my cell number. You all know it. You know, you know, I've been here for a long time. 38 years in the business. Come see me. You'll be happy that you did. Do the cars drive themselves yet? We're we're close. We're close. Not not quite. Close. Well, I though. just want to say I just want to sound like it's Jetsons. Close, you know, close. Like the cars even drive themselves. I had Thomas Dolby on telling me how that works because he had yeah. the steering system and all that stuff. So uh, we're close. Uh, you know. All right. I miss you. Miss See you, you soon. Too, Come you on by. It. Get some pizza. You stay well. All right, I'll drag you to Dundalk or Essex before it's all over with. Love Dennis Galatzos is still here. He's still over Coons for Baltimore Ford. Uh, he's still my friend for uh, two decades. I still love talking football. And he's one of the few people that might call me for a baseball game with tickets for 10 bucks and go to the ballpark together. Um, I'm hoping to do that beginning in April. But uh, we'll see how the offseason is. And if you see Katie Griggs, tell her her letter's on the way. I am Nestor. We are WNST, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. Real journalism. Or so some people think. We're BaltimorePositive.com. Stay with us.